Okay, the second one's working. The first one's not for some reason. That's so strange. I don't know. It's the same exact thing, but oh God. let's see. Oh, this one. I think this one's the first one. Oh, oh, that's us. I don't know. It's the same exact thing, but let's see. Let's go. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. I know that my Redeemer lives, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And after my skin worm shall destroy this body, Yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and I shall behold him in our love. We brought nothing into the world, and it is certain we can take nothing out. The good Lord gave, the good Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord is my life and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom then shall I be afraid? One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after. That I will dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord. And to inquire in his temple. Wait on the Lord. And be of good courage. And he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait. I sing.
Lord, let me know my name and the number of my days that I may be certified how long I have to live. For whole God has made my days as it were a span long, and my age is even as nothing in respect to me. And verily every man living is altogether man. For man walketh in a vain shadow and disquieteth himself in vain. He heedeth up riches and cannot tell who shall have them. And now, Lord, what is our hope? Truly, O oh Lord, our hope is in thee. Behold, I show you this mystery that we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. At the last trump, the trumpet will sound, and the dead shall be raised, incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. And when this corruptible has put on incorruption, this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the same that is written. Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Thanks be to God, who giveth us the victory for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved, he steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. As much as you know that your labor is not in vain. Sing the wondrous song to Jesus. Sing of his mercy and his grace. In mansions bright and blessed, he's prepared for us a place. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout to victory. While we walk this pilgrim pathway, clouds will overspread the sky. But just one glimpse of him in glory will the toils of life repay. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout to victory. So let us then be true and faithful, trust in serving every day. Just one glimpse of him in glory will the toils of life repay. When we all get to him, the day of rejoicing.
this morning, you see on the front of your program to celebrate the life and the spirit of Brother Clifford McAdoo. It says celebrate. So we have come to lift up this family in our prayers. We have come to celebrate a mighty man of faith. And so won't you put your hands together one more time? And let's thank God for the life and the spirit of Brother Clifford McAdoo to the glory of God. And as we begin this service together, let us join our hearts in prayer. Let's pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, the God is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our musician ran into traffic, but there was a time when we didn't have one. And so I want you to open up your hymn books to page 418. We have often talked and tossed and driven on the restless seas of time. Some the skies and island tempests all succeed of bright sunshine. But in the land of perfect day, when the mist has rolled away, we will understand it better by and by. And God is good because our musicians won't be missed. It will scare me to sing it. We've got them all warmed up now. Keep your hand books open. It takes 30 seconds for the organ to warm up. But our hearts are already warm, so we're going to sing. We're going to encourage this family this morning. This family means so much to our church. You know how much I love you. You know how much we love you. We're all in this together. I'm going to go all in this together. So I need y'all to sing to encourage them. Because one day you'll be on the front row. You want know, somebody to sing and encourage you. Amen. 418 will understand it better. I, I, I want you to sing with some conviction. I want you to sing like you believe it. I want you to sing that we'll understand it better. Bye. 
Savior, the one who gives us strength and gives us hope, especially beyond a time such as this. We're here, Lord, once again to celebrate a life so well lived, a service that was so well given, and even a spirit that was so obvious. See. So here, Lord, in spite of the heaviness of heart, in spite of the pain and the sorrow, we want to say thank you. Thank you for this life that was given unto us as a gift. Thank you for the love, for the spirit of joy. Thank you for the service. Thank you for the footprints that you left behind. We thank you. Because he will forever be remembered in our hearts. God, we are here not to pray for him, but we are here to pray for the family. The children, the grandchildren, the great-grandchildren, the sisters, brothers, relatives, whoever may be sent before us, God, we are lifting them in prayer right now. And we ask that you give them strength, give them courage, let them never lose hope of knowing that the day isn't the final end of this beautiful precious life. It is only the end on this side of this earthly realm. But it is the beginning of a new life, a life of eternity, where there is no more suffering, no more heartaches, and no more pain. A life where there is joy, peace, and happiness. We are believers, God, and we trust you through your word. We believe in you because you made it possible. You said so. That at a time like this, our heart should be troubled because we believe in God and we believe also in you. So we ask God that you just give this family whatever it is they're in need of to help them to move from today and look towards tomorrow. 
brought him back with memories in there too. There is a part of them that will never leave you. From your loving Auntie Lassie and family. One good person can touch more hearts than you will ever know. Celebrating the lasting legacy of someone who meant so much and we should can comfort today. Dear Junior, Winston, Patrick, Baby, Dolly, Desrina, and their families. With lots of love from all of us, Kevin, Kenton, Cynthia, and everyone. There are any members from the United Voices, can you please stand? We, the United, we, the officers, members of the United Voices, were deeply saddened to learn the passing of a beloved brother of our beloved brother, Clifford McAdoo, of our choir member, Hazel Cummings. Bonnie Moore. We, we, we know that you mourn. We do not mourn our because we have no hope. We will be with you, Hazel. You just need, if you need us, just give us a call. We love you. Thank you. A resolution and expression of the comfort to the family of our beloved brother in Christ, Brother Clinford McAdoo. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. Revelations 21, 24 through 25. It is with deep sorrow that we, the pastors and officers and members of the First Baptist Church of Crown Heights, extend our heartfelt condolences to the family during this time of bereavement. Whereas God in all his infinite wisdom and understanding has deemed it necessary and appropriate to call his humble servant to be in his presence. And we are as the home going of our beloved brother in Christ has brought sadness and a heaviness of heart. We have the comfort of knowing that he has departed to a better place. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God and believe also in me. In my father's house there are many men mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. While regretfully we must mourn, we should not mourn like those who have no hope. In Christ, hope springs eternal, and we have the assurance of knowing that he is always watching over those of us yet in the land of the living. We further resolve that Brother Clifford McEnil united with First Baptist Church over 45 years ago. Amen. Amen. Under the leadership of our founder, the late Reverend Dr. Clarence Norman, Brother McEnil loved his church and God's people and his greatest joy was being a gatekeeper in the house of the Lord. Amen. Where he served faithfully until his last days, Brother Country Avenue was a faithful and loyal member of First Baptist Church until the end. And finally, we resolve that on this day of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Friday, July 14, 20, that this resolution becomes a part of our church records of the faithful deceased members and a copy be given to the family for their keeping. Sorrowfully submitted, the pastors, officers, and members of the First Baptist Church of Crown Heights, Reverend Dr. Rashad Raymond Moore, Senior Pastor. And to the McIndoo family, you know you guys hold a special place in my heart, not just because I'm Jamaican. Big up, big up, big up. <laughs> But because of the sweetness of the family, Clemford would sit in the back, and every time I came in, he'd turn, and he'd give me that sweet smile, and he'd nod his head. And you know, I, I, I reflected when I heard, and I thought about that wonderful smile. And I know scientists say that when you smile, when you laugh, it, does, it releases endorphins, and it blesses the person who is doing it. But I want to say that his smile didn't only bless him, Come on, it blessed every single one of us that came into his presence when he had that smile. It was a smile of assurance. Hallelujah, a blessed assurance smile. That's a different than a regular smile. When you have a blessed assurance smile, you let the other person know through that smile that even when things may not be going right, I'm still able to smile because I know God is taking care of me. I'm still able to smile because I know better days are ahead. And I believe that right now he is smiling. 
And I, we have to just, when I came here, I was parking, and, and a McIndoo family member, she saw me, and she said, oh my gosh, I haven't seen you in a while. She's smiling now, that's right. And she had that same smile, and I thought, this is what it's about. So even though you miss him, that smile will live in each one of you, and you got to give it to everyone else so you can carry on the legacy of that beautiful smile, okay? I love you guys. Be blessed. Let the church say amen. amen. I've always wanted to do that. <laughs> uh, I have next to me my moral support. Yeah. Uh, this is my daughter, Cadence. Hi, Cadence. I'll move it up just a little bit, make it more comfortable. So I've been, I've, I actually grew up in this church, and I've never stood up here. So it's proof, you know, Uncle Glenn is still making dreams come true. All right. All right. You want to read too? No, you can. All right. No, I'm going to read. All right, we'll think about it. Brother Clenford was born on September 30th, 1946, to the late Elisha McIndoo and Celestine Fife in St. Thomas, Jamaica, West Indies. He grew up in the area of Font Hill, where he attended Font Hill Primary School. However, he had to leave school early in his life in order to help his family. Clenford began educating himself in masonry and agriculture. After excelling in his chosen crafts, he received a work visa for farming and an opportunity to migrate to America. At the young age of 20, Clenford traveled to a new land and began working in Florida. What a wonderful state. It wasn't long before he believed in future possibilities. So when work in Florida came to an end, his journey took a new path. His father believed that if he get a chance to go, he would help the others. I did I, I did I, I did I. And with that mission in his heart, instead of returning to Jamaica, he decided to take a chance, believing in himself, and head for New York City. You wanna go? Okay. In 1970, in, in Clanford is working as an orderly at Congress nursing home in Brooklyn, New York. While working, Clenford McLeod McIndoo met a woman named Doreen Barron. Immured yeah. <laughs> by her beauty and personality and name, Clenford married Doreen. Their, their loving and fruitful marriage would endure for 51 years. Yeah. In 1973, Clenford and Doran made a joint decision to start their own business, a coffee truck. That was great. After finding success, they pivoted to real estate and, re and reinvested their earnings. Clenford was always forward thinking and hard working. Throughout his endeavors, he grew from one truck to six, spread from one store to several restaurants across the East Coast, and evolved from one property to enough real estate to house the village that was his family. And it didn't stop there. Each one, reach one, teach one. Clifford made sure to help, to teach and help others by employing them in his businesses and teaching them how to build to do the same. Even in his later years of life, when health was more of a concern, he still did not stop. His entrepreneurial spirit and supportive nature continued and continued to do so posthumously. Brother Clenford's faith never wavered. He joined the First Baptist Church of Crown Heights where Reverend Clarence Norman Sr. was the pastor at the time. The church became a second home, arguably his first. You could never catch him without his Bible. I know that Bible. I remember that Bible. It was heavy. Clenford was an active member of the Usher Board since becoming a part of the church community in 1978. A faithful servant, Clenford was the only Usher present for almost every Friday night service. 
Even then, he exemplified that the food for, your, for our body was just as important as the food for our soul. On Tuesday, June 27th, 2023, Clenford Seymour McIndoo heard the call of the Father at 11.06 a.m. I know he heard me. I'm going to get it. <laughs> he was a pioneer and a patriarch, a great human being. He loved and cared for everyone and was an affectionately known as Poppy to all. Clemford was preceded in his departure by his father, Elisha, his mother, Celestine, his sisters, Isilda and Malvi, and brothers, Zephaniah and Byron. His blessings and memories will forever be cherished and live on in his, in, in his children. Noel, Sandra, Patrick, Karen, Glenda, and Desirina, his 19 grandchildren, seven great grandchildren, his sisters, Lasita. Lasita and Hazel, and the bounty of nieces, nephews, nephews, cousins, other relatives, fellow church members, and friends the family finds comfort in knowing that he is now reunited with his love, Doreen. Thank you very much. All right, we're good. Appreciate you. Uh, good day, everyone. Uh, I'm here just to, I'm going to give it the best I can, yes. You ready? I hear the sound of a mighty rushing wind, oh yeah. And it's closer now than it's ever been. Said I could almost hear the trumpet as Gabriel sounds the call. Yes, church, at the midnight cry. Yes, we'll be going home. For when Jesus steps out in the crowd to call his children, Yes, the dead in Christ shall rise to meet him in the heaven. And those that remain, yes, shall be with the chain. Yes, at the midnight cry. Yes, we'll be going home. Oh, yes, church. Yes, I look around me. I can see prophecies fulfilling. Oh, yes. Oh, the signs of the time. They are showing everywhere. I could almost hear the Father. Yes. As he said, Son. 
Go take your children Yes, at the midnight cry The bride of Christ Should rise Yes, when Jesus Steps out on the crowd to call his children. The dead in Christ shall rise to meet him in the That remain, yes, they shall be with the chains. Yes, church, and at the midnight cry, yes, we'll be going home. Somebody say praise the Lord. Lord. Somebody say praise the Lord. Lord. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And what a great place to be when it comes to celebrating the life of our loved one. I rise on behalf of our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Richard Raymond Moore, the officers and members of the First Baptist Church of Crown Heights. And I do greet you with Jesus' joy. And the reason I greet you with Jesus' joy because he saw fit for Brother, for Brother McIndoo to become a part of our life, yes, sir. of our church family. Yes, sir. I share with you very briefly my fondest memories because as Sister Mason said, you know, when you walked in the door, he had his special seat in the back. So when you walked in the door, one of the first faces that you would see is Brother McIndoo. Always a great smile pleasant disposition. A lot of us don't know what the role of an usher is, but because they're the first person that you see when you enter the sanctuary, they set the tone for the day. The preacher may be bad, the singing may be horrible, but because you got to see that smiling face when you walked in the door, you knew that no matter what, it was still going to be a good day. My other memory of him is that when his health failed a little while, he had to step back a little bit from the usher board. And as he slowly recovered, he'd take his seat over here. But then he came back with a cane, with a cane. And if you remember in those days, we're going back a few minutes, the ushers always marched around. So there was Brother McIndoo with his cane, never lost a step. So when we look at service, we think of Brother McIndoo. And as long as I've been a member of First Baptist, there's always been a McIndoo on the usher board. <laughs> That's just the way it was. Young old, there was going to be a McIndoo. So um, on a personal note, I just want to say that um, God bless you. The words that I say today, you may forget. But the love that I share with you, I think you'll take it with you and share it forever. If not, check with me. I'll give you more love. <laughs> I'd like to end with Psalms 84. And I found this, uh, this version in the Message Bible, which is a little different than King James in its reading. And I share this with you because I thought it was just beautiful. It says, one day spent in your house, the beautiful place of worship, beats thousands spent on Greek island benches, beaches. I'd rather scrub floors in the house of my God than be honored as a guest in the place of sin. 
all sunshine and sovereign is God, generous in gifts and glory. I think that kind of summed up that brother. All right, when we talk about service, that's deep. I'd rather scrub floors in the house of my God, but that's service. God bless you, family, friends. Know that we continue to pray with you and for you, and may heaven continue to smile upon you. To the pastor, Dr. Moore, members of the clergy, First Baptist family and friends, and especially the McIndoo family. Good morning. I, um, I am humbled to greet you on behalf of the Usher ministry here at First Baptist and extend sympathy and love to the family. So much has been said about Brother McIndoo. Thank you, uh, Deacon Newman. As I remembered from way back when, it's always been a McIndoo on the Usher board. So we still solicit you to come join us. Mac can do to carry forth that legacy that your dad left. Um, an unknown author once said, those we hold closest to our hearts never truly leave us. They live on in kindness they have shared and the love they brought into our lives, unquote. And I would like to just present the resolution from the Joint Board of Usher's Ministry, Friday, July 14, 2023, Joint Board of Usher's Ministry. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted, Matthew 5, 4. Resolution in memory of our Usher, Clinford McIndoo. Whereas the hearts of First Baptist Church of Crown Heights Usher Ministry have been said as God has called the spirit of our dearly beloved member, Usher Clinford McIndoo home to be with him throughout eternity. We deem it befitting to express to the entire family and friends our heartfelt sympathy and breathe a prayer for them that they may have strength to bear their sorrow. Whereas Clinford McIndoo joined the Usher's ministry in 1990 and shortly thereafter was attended and graduated from the National George T. Greer School of Ushering. His dedicate, dedication as a church usher was flawless. We are confident that even in the midst of grief, his transition has brought him eternal joy and fellowship with God, for he has received the crown of righteousness laid up for all the faithful. Whereas we thank our gracious Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for Usher Clinford McIndoo and his influence for good, which has been like a blessing from above. It was a joy ushering and fellowshipping with Usher McIndoo over the last 33 years. He, have, he has left behind a beautiful legacy, fragrant with good deeds and lasting memories. Father Resolve, a copy of this resolution be given to the family with our deepest sympathy. And I quote, may God bring comfort to your heart, calmness to your spirit, healing to your soul, and grace all around you, unquote. Sadly submitted Friday, July 14, 2023, with sympathy and love, the Joint Board of Usher's Ministry Betty Ari Butler, President, Reverend Richard Raymond Moore, Pastor. Thank you. God bless. What a friend. Good morning, church. Puppy was a friend and who spreads out like the leaves of a tree. He's a friend of you, he's a friend of your family, and he's a friend of everybody who walks near you. He was a person who 
I remember I, I had a friend who came to New York. He was staying with his family. And something went wrong, and they asked her to leave. And I would call Papi. I said, look here now. I need you to help me out something. And he says, what? And I told him, he says, tell her to call me right now. Tell me where she is. And Papi went there, stranger. All she just told him what clothes, clothes she was wearing. And he picked her up. And he made sure she was all right. Provided her a little job, too, so she should earn some money come back to Jamaica. Papi is one of those friends who, you know, sometimes we talk about a friend in need. He wasn't only a friend in need, he's a friend every time. It doesn't matter who you were, as long as he knew you or somebody who, who related to you, he, you became his friend, always there. And I was so happy too that during some his late last years, he also found a friend who he started to travel with because he wanted to travel. He, he has always wanted to go somewhere, but he did not go. And he found that this time I need to go. And he found a friend who was willing to wait on him hand and feet. And he traveled around and was happy. We were together in Jamaica. And um, that person is we know her, I know her as Teresa. She's Teresa Graham. Could you stand for me, please? She's in the crowd there. Um, she's a little shy. Please, where is she? Please stand. Yes, that was his friend in the last few days. He, they were together about, and I tell you, when they were together, there was a different light about him. He moved up. He was lively and happy. And today, my friend is gone. I was here when his wife died. They called me and said, Doreen died. I made sure to be here. And I could not avoid this one to I'm here. And to the family, please remember, you need to carry on that same legacy that your father has portrayed over. I know he has removed everybody from that little village called Fontier to New York. And he has provided them with everything he was more than not only a friend to more than he was father and brother to all of them. And as family, as family, I'm asking you, please keep that going. I'm asking you to be strong for each other. This is the time when sometimes we say the wrong thing or do the wrong thing. If that happens, just ignore it, move on. Just move on and hold together as family. Remember, not all of you are strong. You are some of you weak. Hold, help the weak one, keep them going. Thank you. Uh, as Brother Kevin Cummings comes, I also want to make sure that Brother Leon Cummings, where are you? There you go, right there. Uh, that after Brother Kevin, He'll come and read a family tribute from uh, Auntie Lacita McIndoo in England. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, like my brother said earlier, I think I have a leg up on him. I think I have stood up here and spoken before. But there was a wall here. <laughs> um, and, and I told myself as a kid that when I did, I would have Deacon Olase's voice. But I'm not there yet. <laughs> His voice is a lot deeper than mine. Um, I just want to thank everyone for coming. Um, I will say that I do feel encouraged after being here. Um, so I'll, I'll read a, a quick reflection. I, I've always believed that my Uncle Glenn was a real-life Heathcliff Huxtable, and that his wife was Claire Huxtable. Um, and I'm being dead serious. Um, we have Sandra's and a Theo in the family, too. <laughs> um, and and that, made it, that made it seem even more real. And it was not that Uncle Glenn delivered babies though we heard last night that he was pretty close to delivering his first nephew. And it's not because he had a couch in front of his stairs like they did on the TV show. Mostly it was because he was funny. He told great stories, was always looking to help, and always provided a advice in a way that was instructive and accessible. Like he might not have the solution, but he always could share what the next step would be. Speaking of next steps, 
I know I'm not the only one that felt Uncle Glenn despised GPS. <laughs> Whenever I drove him around, the places we would visit were places called Turn Here, <laughs> Go Straight, Bend Right, <laughs> Not Too Far, Soon Reach. <laughs> None of these are in my Google Maps. If I had to distill Uncle Glenn's essence into three words, they would be daring, disciplined, and devoted. Three Ds. Well, three other Ds. Um, besides the restaurant named for Debbie, Donnie, and Desrina. In fact, on reflection, that restaurant could probably have been called Seven Ds. His daring entrepreneurism and vision begat a legacy of opportunities that have already been advanced in many ways by Junior, by Patrick, Winsome, and countless other nieces and nephews. I can say I'm proud of all of them, and I'm proud of the influence Uncle Glenn had. I know this from the reverence that my own mother and father um, have had for him my entire life, and it made an impression on me even as a child. To me, the lesson from Uncle Glenn's life is that we each have the opportunity and responsibility to be sowers and stewards, to plant trees and tend trees, honor the toil of our parents and ancestors, and dare to plant seeds for the future, knowing they will be nurtured. And as those trees grow, bending in the breeze and bearing fruit, their roots interlock for strength, and they become a family and a force in a forest. That was his work, and now it is our work to continue, because legacies require accountability. And I will close the word he would have said himself, naturally. <laughs> Good morning, First Baptist. Morning. It's proud to be at this point. Usually it should be the sons that follow the father, but this time it's the father that's following the sons. <laughs> um, I'm, this is a tribute from a sister who is in London and unfortunately can't make it here today. She will be here, however, later on to pay her respects to those who are here. In loving memory of my dear brother, Glenn, who left us so unexpectedly, like his brothers before him, I'm lost for words. And she's lost for words because she is the, she's older than this brother, but in three years, she has lost three brothers, one in 2020, one in March of this year, and now the brother that followed her. We are all in pieces. Glenn was a lovely, kind, and generous brother, a brother that would help anyone, be it family, friends, or strangers. His love knew no bounds. <clears throat> he was selfless, a wonderful husband to his late wife, Doreen, who we memorialized here in 2019. A loving father to his children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. He loved all his family, and we loved him right back. He visited last year, and as the sister is speaking, he visited London last year, and we celebrate our birthday together. His birthday, his birthday was the day, the day after mine, and I thought I was one day older than he was. <laughs> I was older, of course. He called me his twin sister and teased me mercilessly, <laughs> but all in good jest. I remember many years ago when he had got shot and we all thought he would not make it. I called in to see how he was doing. I called to see how he was doing. To my surprise, he was out of the hospital and guess who answered the phone? My brother Glenn. He said to me, sis, God put me in this earth for a reason and no one is going to blow me away until he's ready 
for me to go. He has been through so much in his life, yet he remained positive throughout. He never complains, he gave so much, and yet asked for nothing back. I am immensely proud of him and what he has achieved, and even proud of yet to call him my twin brother. Little did I know when he came last year for his birthday that it would be the last time that I would see him. Thank God the jokes that we shared and the laughter we had. Cherished moments. He was truly an inspiration to us all. Your life on earth came to an end so suddenly. Everything has changed. Nothing will be the same. You have gone away, but not from our hearts. There you will always stay. You will be missed, my brother. You are one of a kind. Rest in peace in the loving arms of God. Rest in peace. Till we meet again. Maybe 
Don't forever forget only what you what you do for Christ. Oh, only what you do for Christ will live. Say amen. amen. Put your hands together. Let's thank God for the life of Clinford McIndoo one more time. There's a passage in the New Testament book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 11. When I think of the life of Clinford McIndoo, these words come to mind, and I'll read them in your hearing. When I think of Clinford McIndoo, I think about Abraham. It says, by faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place which he would receive as his inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. By faith, he dwelt in the land of promise as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he waited for the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Then fast forward a little bit. It says, these all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, were assured of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For those who say such things declare plainly that they are searching for a city. And truly, if they had called to mind that country from which they had come out, 
they would have had the opportunity to return. But now they desire better, a heavenly country. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. Searching for a city. Searching for a city. First Baptist moved to Eastern Parkway in 1960. Seven. And what's special about First Baptist is that it is a church made up of strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah, pilgrims through this barren land. I am weak, but thou art mighty. Hold me with thy powerful hand. We are all strangers and pilgrims traveling through the world. And what Abraham did is Abraham left everything that he knew behind. Then he made his way to a city that he did not know about. And then when he got to that city, he still wasn't satisfied because he was still searching for a better city. You hear what I'm saying? That's what faith is all about. And if you have ever left a place that you knew behind, you ought to make some noise this morning. Am I talking to anybody who's ever left a country that you knew very well and you packed up your stuff and you made your way to a city you didn't know about because you believed that you could have a better way in a different city or a better country and you didn't know what you was going to get into when you got there, but you found out that the Lord made a way for you and you are where you are today because somebody else, you ought to put your hands together if that's you. You ought to put your hands together if you would not be in New York City had it not been for a mother or a father or a grandfather or a grandfather who left everything they had behind. And as Deacon Newman said, anybody else in New York because your grandmama or your grandfather scrubbed somebody else's floors? Many of us would not be in Brooklyn. We would not even live in New York. We would not be in the United States had it not been for an Abraham in our lineage who left everything behind to give us an opportunity we weren't even thought of. You want to put your hands together and thank God for that. <laughs> Clifford McIndoo had a faith to leave Jamaica leave his education behind, and then after that, he was self-taught masonry and farming. He, he excelled. He had a discipline, right? So what, see, what this eulogy about, y'all, is I'm just taking the stuff out of the obituary. I want you to see your blessings. Because you know, on days like this, we think about what we've lost, but we don't think about all that we have gained. Brother said, you've got a legacy that you could not pay for. And then... The legacy that we've been given is not just to the family, it's to the church as well. Because people like Clifford McIndoo don't grow on a bunch. It's once in a lifetime. You get what I'm saying? It's like a good bottle of wine. Every bottle of wine is not good. And you know, the longer you, you ever been to a restaurant? I'm sorry, you ever been to a restaurant and you got those fancy, y'all in the restaurant business, y'all know what I'm talking about. You know, sometimes you go to these fancy restaurants and they have a long list of the wines and then you start looking down that list and then you start seeing that there's a bottle for 40, a bottle maybe for 100, but if you keep going down that list, it can go up to 5,000. You get what I'm saying? You say, I'm not drinking the no wine for 5,000, but, <laughs> but what happens is, because it's been aged, because of where it has come from, because of the way that the grapes were crushed, because of the story. They say in every bottle of wine, there's a story. And so if you've been through something, you're not a $20 bottle. Clifford McIndoo was not a bottle of Manischewitz. Come on here. This is the best of the best. And, and they don't come like that. So when you say that an usher has passed away who served, who's been a, a member for over 40 years, you're not going to see that again in your lifetime.
Clinford McIndoe had a presence on the usher board. But not just him, it's a legacy. It was a family. Then when you think of Clinford, I, and I, I just got here in 2020. But I do remember Zephaniah McIndoe, who the Lord called home the week of the shutdown. We never got to celebrate his life the way we're celebrating Clinford's life. But they have a legacy here at First Baptist. They are baked into the story of First Baptist. Not only was he a man of discipline, but he was also a man of love. He loved his wife. And you know, they say that, you know, you start to miss those people. You start to miss the love of your life. He had a legacy. And the Mac, you know, certain names carry kind of weight to it. You know what I'm saying? Mackindu carries weight to it. Am I right about that? You know, certain names just make doors open and makes things shift. He had that kind of name because that's a part of the legacy. That's a part of the legacy. He taught himself how to craft and then he made his way from Jamaica to Florida searching for a city. And then he got to Florida and then when the job, I don't know if the job let him go, but when the job ended, then the, the, the obituary says that he started believing in future possibilities. That's what I try to do here. I try to make people believe that the past was great, but, but there's still a future ahead of us. He was a kind of man who had a faith that could dream of other possibilities. Some people only see problems, but this brother saw possibilities. He believed in future possibilities. That's what he did. And he was searching for a city. He didn't stop in Florida, but then he came up to New York. And then, you know, they say that you can always, it's better to teach a man how to fish. You can feed him fish for a day. But if you would teach him how to fish, see, this is a black man of faith. He had an entrepreneurial spirit, restaurants, coffee businesses. This don't come but once in a lifetime. He had an Abraham spirit, and, and, and he was never satisfied. That's what that's about. A lot of people, come on, since you come with me preach. He kept going and going. A lot of people get satisfied, one business. And this, watch this now. Some of y'all know this, but to start a business is an act of faith. You, you know what I'm talking about? And then you start hiring people, and then you got to go to, to sleep at night, Worried about how you're going to make payroll? You know what I'm saying? He did it and he put his faith. And the brother said he put a seed in the ground. That's faith. There's nothing you can do to make a seed grow. You just water it. You get in that kitchen. You cook chicken. You clean chicken. Because you know white folks don't clean a chicken. You, you clean chicken. You open a restaurant. You get what I'm saying? Faith. That's, he had a faith and he was always unsatisfied. Just kept going and going and going. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I'm onward bound. Lord, still planting and aiming and striving. That's your, that's the Mac and do legacy. And then walk in church on Sunday. And even after his health with the cane, I keep feeling like I saw him sitting right in front of me. He was still right there. Same seat with his brother. That's the Mackindu legacy. And then it says, instead of returning to Jamaica, he decided to take his chance in New York City. So you got a couple of things in your bag. You know, when you go to a party and you get one of those to-go bags, you come and you start taking stuff out your bag and see what you got. So you got a work ethic. You got love. You got family. Wait, hold on. Did this say 19? So you know you lived a good life when you got two pages on the obituary. <laughs> That's how you know, overflow. 19 grandchildren. You get what I'm saying? That's the legacy. That's the legacy. Then you've got seven great grandchildren. That's the legacy. You've got a lot to be thankful for this morning. But the most important thing is he gave you an example of faith. Many people talk faith. They don't got it. To leave what you know, to leap into the absurdity of a place called the United States, to land in an unknown place, to start businesses, 
and to keep looking forward to a city. Now, let me tell you something here, and I'm, I'm done. As a man whose family came from the South, I got some understanding of the ups and downs of migration. But I must admit to you, as a pastor in Crown Heights, working with families dealing with citizenship issues, I've got a newfound respect for people like Brother McIndoo, who go through the ups and downs of the immigration process in the United States. I mean, going through, trying to get questions answered by an immigration lawyer. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Trying to get your papers. That right there, y'all, is faith personified. You came searching and searching and searching for a city. And not just that, he gave so much to this city. He fed this city. Those restaurants fed this city. That coffee truck kept this city open. He's a part of it. And then I met another relative, I don't know the relation, but the brother from Natural Blend. Where is he? Is that him right there? Yeah, stand up. Come on. And that's Aquila right next to him. We had vacation Bible school last year, and we were looking for an opportunity to teach people how to eat healthy. And brother said, I got roots in First Baptist. He came, laid out the ribs and the peas and rice. <laughs> Dave, I know he's right there. He did it. A part of that is the legacy. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth save the spirit that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Because when you take the time to teach a man how to fish, your works follow. The family lives into a legacy. And the most important thing a black man can leave is a legacy. Am I talking right? A legacy. Jay-Z said, what's more important than throwing dollars in the strip club? Credit. Am I right about that? He left you a work ethic. How to live how to serve, how to make a living an honest and decent way. You get what I'm saying? There are other options out there, but not for the McIndoo's. So when you, when you wake up in the morning, you see McIndoo on the back of your, your, your resume, you just hold yourself to a higher standard. He left, he is, for us, Abraham. Abraham left home. Abraham tried a new city. Abraham made his way. And look at this, the legacies before us. All these people packed in this church, and most of them are Macandus. <laughs> That's the legacy. And the good news is that when you do lose Papa, you didn't lose him by yourself. You're surrounded by a whole village. you got a church that you can come to and celebrate his life. Now, I don't want to be rude in here, but, you know, it always amazes me how folks who don't belong to nobody's church, don't come to church, want to bang on the doors to have their funeral in the church. But when you're a Mackindoo, you don't got to do that. Because you got roots. We know you. We are all family. But the most important thing, God was not ashamed to be his God because he was looking for a city. That's what God wants. God doesn't want people who are perfect. God looks at people who are faithful. Sometimes you're gonna mess up, but you get back up. For a sinner is just one who has fallen down and gets back up. Sometimes you're gonna start the business, it's not gonna work out, but you get up and, sometimes you hire the wrong person, you gotta let them go, but you just keep on going. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, but you keep on going. And if you just keep on going, God is not ashamed or afraid to be called your God because you have the faith to look for a city. I'm done. I got this one story that I tell all the time, but you act like you've never heard it before. <laughs> there was a man who was living, came from Jamaica, and made his way because he heard about there was a better opportunity in the United States. So he made his way to Florida, maybe Miami, I don't know. But he decided that even when he got to Miami, that still that wasn't enough. He found a job, but it still wasn't exactly what he was looking for. And so he heard that there was still another city. 
And so there was a greyhound that was going from Miami all the way up to this city. He got his bags and his suitcase. He packed up his life and made his way up to this city through Florida. I don't know, Alabama, all the way through Georgia and all the way through South Carolina and North Carolina. He might be taking a long route, but, but he kept going. And people stepped getting off. But he said, no, I'm not getting off in Georgia. I'm not getting off in Virginia Beach. But I heard that there is still... A city. I want to get my eyes on that city because I believe there's a better opportunity in that city. Well, he kept going. People kept getting off in D.C. and in, in Baltimore. And eventually he was the last man left on the bus. Bus driver says, sir, I've got to take you into the city. And the man said, yeah, I've been heard, I heard about this city. I saw it in the, in the catalog. I saw the lights in Times Square. And i got to get to that city. Well, they got close to the city. But then when he got ahead, he realized that there was a big, dark thing ahead of him. It was called a tunnel. But you know, he was from Jamaica, so he had never seen a tunnel before. He lived in Miami. He'd never seen a tunnel before. He says, I'm not going through that. Bus driver says, man, I got you all the way from Miami. I got to get you through the tunnel in order to get to the city. It's the only way to the city. He says, take me back to Miami because I'm not going through a tunnel. I've never seen one of those before. It's dark, it's unknown, but take me on home. Bus driver says, sir, you've come too far to turn back now. Let me just take you on into the city. Man said, I'm not going. Well, after a while, the man fell asleep. Bus driver started driving around Newark, New Jersey, started driving around until the man got worn out and he knocked out and snored, laid his head on the window. And when he laid his head on the window, the bus driver looked back and drove on into the city. He drove through the tunnel, through the darkness, through the valley of the shadow. He drove through the valley. He drove through the tunnel. So the man finally got up. He saw all of these lights, people with their coffee trucks and their restaurants, their nice clothes and their nice hats. He tried to figure out, where are we? Man said, sir, I, this is the city. He said, how do we get here? Because you said that there was a tunnel. I said I wasn't going home. You told me there was a city on the other side. I said I wasn't going. So where are we? He said, sir, we are in the city. How did I get here? He says, well, when you fell asleep and put your head on a window, I know you weren't expecting to fall asleep. When you fell asleep, I decided to drive on through the tunnel to bring you into the city. And we are here today, not because this is the end. We are here today because this is a home going service. See, the way I see it is that when we got the phone call on June 27th, Clifford McIntyre fell asleep. Yes. Happened to fall asleep in California. But he fell asleep. But when he fell asleep, God took him into that city. He was in California. But the Lord said, I've got one more city for you. You've seen Miami. You've seen New York. You've seen the beauty of California, but I still got one more city where the streets are paved with gold. One more city where there is no more pain. One more city where there is no more death. On that city where pleasure shall reign, no mournful soul shall ever roam its plain. In that city where God shall reign forever and ever. In that city where the angels are singing holly, hallelujah. Howdy, howdy, and never goodbye in that city. And so Clifford McIndoe, we celebrate his life because he's been to some cities. He liked to travel. But today we say farewell because there's still one more city. And beloved, if you would just hold on to God's unchanging hands, we're going to get to the city one day. That's what this is all about. Not a bye-bye. See you later. See you later. On the other side, there's a Doreen. I'll see you later. On the other side, there's a Zephaniah. On that other side, there's mama and daddy. So, 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 so this is just, I'll see you later. T-T-Y-L, B-R-B, I'm going to hit you up. It's 
it's, it's, only, it's only a transition. Only a transition. I'm done because we got to get to the funeral home. Please, Sean, come now. But I was on the phone with a friend the other day. I'm going to use this for another eulogy. But I was on the phone the other day with a friend. You know, get on the phone. You go, Hello? 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 Can you hear me? I said, whatever you just said for the last 30 seconds, I didn't hear you. My friend said, oh, I'm sorry. What happened was I was going through a tunnel. So you're going to cry. But he's just going through the tunnel. When you hold on, don't hang up the phone. Don't give up on God now. Keep holding on. Because after a while, you'll hear him again. You'll see him again on the other side. Thank God for a good father. Thank God for a good brother. Thank God for a good First Baptist member. Thank God for a faithful usher. Thank God most of all for a man of faith who left everything he knew behind to come to what he did not know that you and I would have a better life here in this place. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Since y'all standing up, y'all might as well thank God for Clifford McIndoo. Amen. Amen to the glory of God. Let us all stand. Let us all stand. Let us all stand. I heard a voice from heaven saith unto me, right? Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. From henceforth saith the spirit that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. For as much as it has pleased almighty God and his, his wise providence to take out of this world the soul of our deceased father, brother, friend, Usher Clifford McIndoo, we commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. And we continue to look forward to the general resurrection and the life to come through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Eternal God, we now come and we thank you one more time for the life of our dear brother. And we ask now, O oh God, that you would continue to keep this family close to you, but that you will also be the glue that binds them together. Even, O oh God, in the midst of this transition, help them to know that weeping will endure for the night, but joy will come in the morning. God, we, we have nothing else to say but thank you, thank you, thank you for his legacy, thank you for his spirit. And as a church, O oh God, we strive to live according to your principles. We strive, O oh God, to keep the spirit of our ancestors alive. Men like Clinford McIndoe and sisters like Doreen and brothers like Zephaniah, we thank you for the legacy. We are all family and together we will strive to keep his legacy alive. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace this day and throughout our tomorrows. And the people of God said amen, amen, amen. amen. and amen. Just some brief instructions for the cemetery, everyone. And again, I thank you all for being here. To Reverend Moore, as always, thank you for bringing us the word this morning. Truly inspirational. And for Bishop Freeland for his ministry and song, we thank you. As we arrive at the cemetery this morning, I'll ask you that we will make two stops. We'll stop at the office, and it will be a short and brief opportunity for you to use the restrooms. They're limited, so if you can use them here, that'll be good as well. And then we'll make a stop at the grave. At the grave, please stay in your cars until you see the family exit the limousine. The pallbearers will not be needed at the cemetery. The cemetery is in control of that. Just stay in your cars until you see them place the casket and the family enter, exits their cars. Now I'll ask the pallbearers as well to meet me at the back steps. The pallbearers at the back step. You can make your way there now. That's where we'll need you. 
And again, we thank you all for being here this morning. You will find additional funeral stickers at the back. If you're leaving to the cemetery, please put one in your front windshield above your passenger and one in your back windshield. Our trip will be about an hour and 20 minutes. Thank you again this morning. Above Jesus, sing his mercies and his grace. Do not block the aisles. Stay in your seats until the casket leaves. And do not block the aisle, please. Thank you. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In a mansion bright and blessed, he'll breathe for us a place. And when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout victory. While we walk this pilgrim pathway, clouds will over spread the sky. And when our traveling days are over, not a shadow, not a sigh. And when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus we will sing and shout the victory when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be and when